now we are going to understand the cascade which is called as the blood clotting cascade so we are going to talk about hemostasis or clotting of blood which is another important factor while we are studying the concept of blood okay so this is something called as a blood clot in a microscopic way this is how you can see it where this is your rbc and the white color structures that you are seeing here these are fibrinogen mesh so these are made up of fibrinogen so clotting of blood is also called as hemostasis which comes from two words hemo means blood and stasis means standing so basically hemostasis is a sequence of responses where, which finally end up in the result in the stoppage of bleeding it will prevent bleeding to further happen okay so how does this blood clot when a blood vessel is injured a number of psych physiological responses occur and these are simultaneously happening and they ultimately promote the hemostasis the breakage of blood vessel exposes collagen proteins to the blood and this initiates three separate overlapping mechanisms called as homeostatic mechanisms so these are the first one is vasoconstriction second one is the platelet plug formation and third one is the fibrin clot formation so three steps all of them happen when there is a breakage in the blood vessel so how is this breakage seen as you can see in this diagram in this gif that is showing also the endothelial cells these are the endothelial cells of the blood capillary or the blood vessel and if you see in this diagram there is a rupture in them and this is allowing blood to release out so as a result the collagen that is present here normally here they will be the collagen fibers so these collagen fibers they are aggregating these pink structures which are called as platelets and this platelet forms the platelet plug formation and then this is further done uh, further converted into a clot by fibrin web and at the same time vasoconstriction happens so these three steps happen and the initiation of this step is the collagen vascular collagen vascular collagens reaction to platelets due to damage due to damage so the first step is going to be vasoconstriction right so let us see the first step now in vasoconstriction what happens or vasoconstriction what happens is the smooth muscles of the damaged blood vessel it contracts right so what happens the, see normally these are the blood vessels and these are the valves of the blood vessels okay which allows a unidirectional flow means blood will can flow only in one direction not in the opposite direction right so if you see here these are the smooth muscle areas or the endothelial cells so what happens is these smooth muscles they start to constrict okay just let me remove this from the slide yeah so what happens is the constriction will make the muscle narrower so that the blood movement or the movement of the blood will be lesser see here if you can observe in this gif it is clearly seen that normally when the blood levels are normal look at the flow and now what is happening in the constriction see this is the normal scenario and when the constriction the constriction is applied here in this area and when the constriction is applied what is happening the amount of blood flow is reduced into that area okay so it, it what it does is it reduces or stops the flow of blood from the ruptured blood vessel okay so that is what is happening here and once that happens once that vasoconstriction happens once there is that slow of blood flow means if see if there is continuous blood flow in the ruptured area blood will keep oozing out there will be internal bleeding or external bleeding to prevent that first there will be vasoconstriction so that inflow of the blood into the damaged area is stopped then what happens then the collagen fibers they bring the platelets they bring the platelets all the platelets which are leaking out of the dam from the damaged area they get attracted to the collagen fibers okay once they get attracted to the collagen fibers they form what is called as a primitive 
platelet plug okay so these segregations they aggregate platelets and they make them sticky so they adhere and form a platelet plug so this condition this formation of the platelet plug condition it is called as primary hemostasis this is called as primary hemostasis when the platelet plug is formed but this plug is not strong it is not strong enough to withhold everything so you need to form make it stronger for that you need to cover it with fibrinone so the second one is formation of the fibrin mesh or the fibrin web which mixes with the platelet plug to form a clot now this clot is a web of fibrin with the trapped blood cells in it so this is how it has happened see here the platelets they have come here and they have formed the platelet plug and now to that the fibrin polymers are attached and this is now our clot okay so clot is nothing but platelet plug platelet plug plus the fibrin mesh together is called as the clot now whatever serum that will ooze out after the blood clots that is called as serum whatever liquid that will come out after the blood is clotted that is called as serum okay now so here i have drawn that structure once again to get an overview of the whole clotting process so this is the blood wall of the blood vessel blood vessel wall which is filled with the endothelial cells right these blue color ones are the platelets platelets and this is the collagen fiber right so first what happens there should be an injury so let us give a small injury let us injure our platelet cell here i'll injure it here okay so what happens in the injury here now there is the bursting there is the bursting of the cell wall so the blood what it tries to do it tries to come out of this injury like this okay now when that is happening what the first step is what vasoconstriction we have discussed that the first step is vasoconstriction right so what happens in vasoconstriction this area can you see this area let us say the blood is flowing in this direction okay so this area where there will be incoming flow of the blood this will be constricted so it will become narrower so let us change that into a little narrower structure so i have made it into a narrower structure and you can see that in this region there is vasoconstriction that has happened so there is vasoconstriction in this region so this will prevent or slow down the blood flow of blood at the same time these blue color platelets they react to the collagen and they get aggregated here like this so this is the second step what is the second step platelet plug formation formation right now this platelet plug as we have discussed is very weak so it should be covered by a mesh and that mesh will be our fibrinogen mesh so we'll take an uh, uh, another color to draw the fibrinogen mesh yeah so maybe just use a black yeah so like this it has to be covered with another meshy kind of substance which is nothing but the fibrinogen fibrin mesh now the thing is in the body in or in the blood fibrinogen is present the clotting factor is fibrinogen and it is present but this fibrinogen is in the inactive form fibrinogen okay it is in what form it is in the inactive form right first this fibrinogen has to be converted into fibrin the inactive form of fibrinogen it has to be converted into the active form which is called as the fibrin so it is converted into fibrin okay okay now this conversion is carried out 
by certain factors which are called as tissue factors clotting factors and tissue factors we will see it in the blood clotting cascade which are a part of the blood clotting cascade so they converted into an active form so here the process that happens here it is called as the blood clotting cascade blood clotting cascade a pathway that happens where fibrinogen in the inactive form is converted into fibrin but unfortunately this fibrin is still not stable it is the soluble form of fibrin means its threads are very loose like this it's not a very compacted structure it has got a very loose structure right so next what happens is this fibrin has to be converted into the solid form into the strength and insoluble form so the insoluble fibrin form fibrin form where the threads are very tightly knit and very strengthened so that when they cover the platelets when they mix with the platelets it becomes a very strong clot like structure which is insoluble right so this conversion is carried out by a factor called as fibrin stabilizing factor fibrin stabilizing factor stabilizing factor this is also a tissue factor which is a part of the cascade and then the clot is actually properly stable okay so this is what happens in the blood clot so you have the primary vasoconstriction secondary platelet formation and finally at the end of it all of it you have the the clot the fibrin clot that is formed okay now let us see what is this blood clotting cascade so the mechanism of the blood clotting or the clotting cascade takes place in three essential steps formation is of the prothrombin activator activating the prothrombin and formation of the fibrin so for that five conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin you need prothrombin and for prothrombin to become active you need prothrombin activator and for that activator you have an entire step by, by which the activators will be formed now the basically what happens is you have two types of injuries the tissue damage which is the external injury and the vascular damage which is the internal injury if it is tissue damage then the blood clotting pathway is called as the extrinsic pathway and if it's in vascular damage then the blood clotting pathway is called as the intrinsic pathway right now once the pathway is chosen after certain complicated steps finally they will form the prothrombin activator both of them will form the prothrombin activator okay now this prothrombin activator it converts inactive prothrombin into activated thrombin so it is converting prothrombin into thrombin and it is doing it in the presence of your ionic calcium ions okay it is doing it in the presence of calcium ions then what happens this thrombin what it does is it converts the fibrinogen i told you nana that there should be a something that converts inactive form of fibrinogen into first the soluble form so that is converted by thrombin and then this thrombin along here this one this the, the, this arrow is a mistake yeah here this comes here then this soluble fibrin is converted into that insoluble strength and one by factor 13 which is also called as the fibrin stabilizing factor fibrin stabilizing factor so this is the overall path cascade that happens whether it is extrinsic or intrinsic everything will come the they will all merge with the prothrombin activator till this step till the formation of uh, the prothrombin activator the steps in the extrinsic and intrinsic are different but from the formation of the prothrombin activator the steps are all quite similar and same for more content like share and subscribe to www.i-win.in